Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyat a'malina. Man yahdihillahu falamudilla la wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala. Wa nashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la. Wa nashadu anna sayyidana wa maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد ومن يقتل مؤمنا متعمدا فجزاؤه جهنم خالدا فيها وغضب الله عليه ولعنه وعد له عذابا عظيما صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My brothers won of the first sins that were per perpetrated in the history of humanity after the sin of arrogance and takabur was killing another individual who was murdered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created Adam alayhi salatu wa salam and his wife they had children Habil and Qabil two brothers Habil, I'm going to be very very brief Habil and Qabil both brothers they wanted to marry a certain individual and because of this young woman both brothers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story inside the Quran that both brothers got into a bit of a back and forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one brother, he said to the other brother, that, oh my brother, if you are going to kill me, if you are going to kill me, and if you are going to stretch your hand out to me, then never ever will I ever stretch my hand out to you. I will kill you. That brother who wanted to really, really marry this young woman, what did he do? He stretched his hand out and he perpetrated the sin of Qatl and he killed his brother. Because of which the Prophet says, until the day of Qiyamah, every single individual, every single individual who commits a murder will be on the shoulders of this one individual. That one brother who was the first ever individual to kill every single murder that happens until the day of Qiyamah will all be upon the shoulders of that one brother. Imagine how many murders that's going to be. Imagine how many people that is going to be. Forget what has happened and how many people have been killed until today. Just look in the past year since 7th of October Allahu Akbar, until now, how many Muslim Palestinians have been killed in Gaza? Nearly half a million people. Imagine how many have been killed in the history of Gaza. Imagine how many are going to get killed. Imagine how many are being martyred and killed and slaughtered in Lebanon. Imagine how many have been killed in Iraq, over a million when the, U, when the United States of America went against Iraq, one million people were killed. This is why from that time, from the time of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, until today, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam came, somebody just gets me a Quran from there. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam came, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam stamped out a rule. A rule was made, a very simple rule. You know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this story, Allahu Akbar, Allah mentions this rule inside the Quran. That an individual who kills another mu'min, another Muslim, Somebody who kills. One brother he said, Inni uridu an tabu abi ismi wa ismi ka fatakuna min ashabin nar wa dalika jaza'u zalimi. Sorry. 
اسے لئیم بسطت الی یدکا لتقتلنی ما انا بباسط یدی الیک لیقتلت انی اخاف اللہ رب العالمین that oh my brother if you are going to stretch your hand out to kill me then I am not going to do the same to you I am not going to do the same and he killed him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he makes a mistake Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he makes an usool من ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل أنه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا This is a rule until the day of قيامت that an individual Allah says because of this we had written upon the Bani Israel that if anybody kills another innocent soul without him killing somebody or without him causing corruption in the land if somebody if A, B, C, D has not killed somebody you are not allowed to kill him if he is not causing corruption in the land you are not allowed to kill him simple as and Allah says whoever does فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا It is as if he has killed the whole humanity. My brothers, in Islam, in Islam, the value of one life, the value of one life is like the value of the entire humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam value one life and this is a normal life. Whether it is a Muslim or whether it is a non-Muslim. Even if it is a non-Muslim and that non-Muslim is innocent and you have killed that non-Muslim, his not having Islam inside him, not having Iman inside him, it is still equivalent to killing the entire humanity. It is still, this is how much of a severe sin this is. But Allahu Akbar, we've taken it so lightly so lightly that somebody looks at us, what are you looking at? Pull out an axe and put it in his head three times. What have we come to? You know, animals, animals are not even like this. Allah says, فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا That you've killed the entire humanity, you've killed everybody. And Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever, listen to this carefully, whoever saves one life, Whoever saves one innocent life, فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا It's as if he has saved the entire humanity, every single person's life. Life in the eyes of Allah, life in the, in the, uh, uh, in the books of Shariat is so valued, is so valued. Wallahi azim we can't imagine it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does he say? Allahu Akbar in a hadith. Very beautiful hadith. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-Asr he says that Ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Yatufu bil Kaaba. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing tawaf of the Kaaba. Imagine it is the haram Makkatul Mukarrama You've got the Kaaba there How beloved this is to Rasul to Allah Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa sallam and his son Ismail alayhi salatu wa sallam the difficulty they went through, the mujahada and the struggle they went through to erect this place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned it inside the Quran. They made so much dua that, oh Allah, accept this, accept this. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Famous dua, oh Allah, accept this from us. In the deserts where there was no food, there was no insan, there was no water, there was nothing. Two of the greatest anbiya, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, who is known as the father of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. Allahu Akbar. He is building this Kaaba with his blessed hands. He has been. Jibra'il alayhi salatu wassalam came and showed him the Kaaba. These are the foundations. Such a pure creation like Jibra'il was sent to show the correct foundations. This was such a pure place, such a pure place. That even the mushrikeen of Makkatul Mukarrama, when they were building this, you know what they said? They said they were reconstructing the Kaaba. They demolished the previous one. They were de reconstructing the Kaaba and they said, at that time, whilst doing shirk, Islam hadn't even come. What did they say? They said that no haram wealth is going to come towards this place. This is how pure it was. This is how pure Allah has kept this place. 
that even when Islam wasn't there, Rasulullah was there, the Quran wasn't there, even then Allah had taken responsibility to keep this pure place. Imagine how pure this place is. Rasulullah sallam is doing tawaf. And Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-Asr ta'ala, he says, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saying, Ma at yabaka, O Kaaba, is addressing the Kaaba, O Kaaba, how beautiful you are. O Kaaba, how beautiful you are. O Kaaba, how beautiful is your fragrance. Wa ma a'zama hurmatik. And O Kaaba, how beautiful is your, uh, is your purity. And how high is your purity. He said, Walladhi nafsu Muhammadin biyadi. I swear by the being in whose hand is in whose hands the life of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam la hurmatul mu'min indallahi a'zamu min hurmatik malihi wa damihi he says I swear by Allah in whose hands my life is in whose hands the life of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam one life the life of one the life of one 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 mu'min one person who says la ilaha illallah his life, his wealth, and his blood is far more sanctified and religious than even you, O Kaaba. And today, we're taking them like no man's business. They're already blasting us in Palestine. They're slaughtering us. We're getting slaughtered there. Beghelto, and down here you're coming and you're killing each other. <laughs> down here you're killing each other. Have enough not already been killed? Hasn't that moved your heart to respect each other and to love each other? To not butt by each other, but over one look? Oh, he looked at me. Why did you look at me? We've got so much takapur inside us. We've got so much beghelti inside us. Now we've got time on our hands. We can wake up at 12 o'clock. Nobody's going to say anything. Why? Because in the bank, there's plenty of money. There's plenty of money, plenty of food. There's plenty of provisions, plenty of clothes. So now what, 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 what are we going to do with spare time? Let's go fight with each other. Somebody looks at us, what are you looking at? Why did you push my little brother? Why did you, why did you look at my father like this? Nobody can put his head down. It's all because of the haram and the musti that we've got inside us. That we are taking the life of somebody who is far more beloved, far more sanctified and far more religious. And far more precious in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than even the Kaaba himself. The Kaaba himself. Allahu Akbar. So ajeeb. Kassam, I get shocked. Look at the, look how much, how much emphasis Allah has put on saving the life of a mu'min. There are so many hadiths. Time doesn't allow me. We've got very less time. So many hadiths. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that that individual who even points a sharp object at another brother, he points even a sharp object at another brother, even he's not from amongst us. Even he's, and we're going after each other with axes. We're going after each other with guns and knives. This is all the ganda and khabasa that's coming from London. Watching all the rap music. Watching those songs, watching all those videos of, you know, other guys, Gore, you know, other people who haven't got anything to do with Islam. Listen to their rap music. Look how they spend their lives. Look how they dress. Look at the topis they wear. Look at the jeans they wear. Look at the clothes they wear. Look at the young language that they use. And then stop bringing all that into Bradford. This is what it is. This is what it is. Then they wake up in the morning, then they want to be like them. They have their pants halfway down. Tops like this, the cups like that, they're walking around. Ya Khudaya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly in the Quran, Allah says, Waman qatala mu'minan muta'amidan, fajazauhu jahannamu khalidan fiha, wa ghadib Allahu alayhi, wa la'anahu, wa a'addalahu adaban azima. Allah has mentioned four things inside this Quran. Whoever kills a mu'min, a believer, purposely, what does purposely mean? People are saying to me, Oh, Ustaji, it wasn't done purposely. What does purposely mean? Ask Quran, what does purposely mean? Purposely doesn't mean that you go with the intention of killing somebody. This is not purpose, remember. In Islam, purposely means if you have gone towards somebody with a sharp object. 
if you have gone towards somebody with towards somebody to hurt that individual with a sharp object and you've ended up killing him you purposely done it woman qata wa man woman qatala mu'minan mut'ammidan fa jazauhu his punishment is what jahannam khalidan fiha forever and ever he's going to be in there jahannam khalidan fiha wa ghadib allah alayhi the wrath of Allah is on that individual. Wala anahu and Allah will curse that individual. Wa adalahu azaban adima. Allah says, I have prepared a huge, a huge punishment for that individual. A huge punishment for that individual. Allah is saying, people are saying to me, Molana Saab, Allah is the most merciful. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But remember. Where Allah says, I am the most merciful, then at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am swift in giving punishment. When Allah, we always remember this verse, isn't it? We always remember, oh Allah is the most merciful, oh Allah is the most merciful. That's all we remember. You know, when we make sin, that's all we remember. When Allah says, Adab and Shadeed, severe punishment, Adab and Alima, severe punishment. Azab and Azima, severe, heavy punishment. What's happened to all those verses? Why have we forgot all those verses? Remember, my brothers, every sin has got a time. Just like down here, if you beat somebody up, you'll get done for GBH. GBH has its time, six months, ten months. You make a robbery, it's got its time, ten months, twelve, two years. You hurt somebody, you steal somebody's car. You'll get say, uh, 10 months, 12 months. You rape somebody, you'll get 5 years, 6 years. You get caught in the riots, you'll get 2, 3 years. Every punishment has its guys own allotted time. Similarly, if you get caught in this country killing, what is it? Life sentence. Yes, even in the Akhirat is the same thing. Even in the Akhirat is the same thing. If you steal, there's going to be a few months, there's going to be a few years. If you hit somebody, there's going to be a month, few years. If you bug by somebody, there's going to be a few months, a few years. If you slap somebody, a few months, a few years. Zina, a few months, a few years. Alcohol, a few months, a few years. Interest, a few months, a few years. You kill somebody, life sentence. You kill somebody, those 15 khabis out there who chase that young man, you got life sentence if Allah doesn't forgive you. You got life sentence. But masho, be gharat, be sharan, be haya you are. For going and taking the life of a young man, you're cowards, you're nothing but cowards. That's what you are. If any of the Mulvi talks about it or doesn't, I don't care, I'm gonna talk about it. Allah has given me this member. Allah has given this masjid, Allah has given this platform and Allah has given amanat and I will fulfill the amanat. I will fulfill the amanat. You have done wrong. Your fathers are doing wrong by hiding you. Your fathers are doing wrong by hiding you. Beherat fathers, khuda ki qasam, amal rasulullah's member. If my son tomorrow killed somebody, khuda ki qasam, before the morning even set, I love him in the prison. I'll take him myself. How dare you take a life? These are the words of Allah and His Rasul that I'm talking to you with. How dare you take somebody's life over somebody looking at you, somebody shouted at you, somebody screamed at you, somebody hit your car. How dare you break Allah's law? How dare you break? You're cowards. Allah has given a strict rule in the Quran. If somebody has wronged you, if somebody has wronged you, you are only allowed to do that much wrong to that person. If somebody has punched you, you're only allowed to punch him. If somebody has slapped you, you're only allowed to slap him. If somebody has kicked you, you're only allowed to kick him. If somebody has swore at you, you're only allowed to swear at him. If somebody has bugged by you, you're only allowed to bug by him. That individual who forgives and he pardons and he is patient, his reward is with Allah. But they can't do that. They've got too much arrogance inside them. They've been brought up on haram. They're eating haram. They're wearing haram. And this, this is the result of haram. This is the result of haram. You're cowards. You can't fight for yourself. That's why you have to take 
15 people. Whatever that young man did to you, I'm not saying he's innocent. But remember one thing, I've heard such bigherats with beards on their faces and topies on their heads saying he deserved it. How dare you say he deserved it? How dare? How can, how can a woman be deserving of being killed by an axe in the middle of the night? By 15 people? How? How? What type of hearts have you got? That you're saying he deserved it? If he punched, then he deserves a punch. If he kicked you, he deserves a kick. But the thing is, let me tell you, and I'm talking to the father of that man. The thing is, is you brought your child up as a coward. Because your child couldn't go and fight his own battles. That's why he had to go and he had to take 15 guys with him. Because he is a coward. He's a rat and he's a weasel. That's why he is. That's why he had to take 15 people. Because he didn't have the ball inside him. And now you as a father, you haven't got the ball to go grab him by his throat, take him to that competition and say, shove him in the cells. You haven't got the ball. Get this message and I know there are people who know who that individual is. I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't want to see the guy. I wouldn't even spit on his face. Such begherat we've got in this community. Today has happened. Tomorrow will happen again. Single mother. His mother is a single mother. Did she deserve it? Tell me. Did she deserve it? The only one that was probably providing for his mother. Only one that was probably protecting her on a night. Our women are scared anyway. The night sets and our women locking the doors and locking the windows. Who's, who's going to now give her a source of security? Be gherat, be sharam. Message to the father. If you've got the ball and you're a man, and I know this video is going to get to him. If you're, a, if you're a man and if you've got ball and if you believe in Allah and the last day, take your son to the police station. Take him to the police station, put a rope around his neck, drag him down Lee's road and take him down there like a dog because he don't, be, he don't, he don't deserve to be treated like a human being. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look what he says. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, La zawalu dunya ahwalu indallahi min qatli rajulin muslim. If the entire earth ends, this is easier for Allah than killing one muslim. If the entire earth ends, if the entire dunya finishes, this is easier for Allah than one Muslim being killed. And then you've got Begherat with beards on their faces and with topis and jubbas and hats and pagris and other Muslim. He deserved it. Who deserved it? Let me see this happen to yours tomorrow and then we'll see. Everybody's got shaitani inside them. Everybody's got a bit of angel inside them. But nobody deserves 15 running after him and killing him like a rat on the road. But remember one thing, if these individuals are not taken to task, then remember, mark my words, I make dua, Allah forgives them. My chahat inside, my want inside, Allah forgives because we don't want anybody hurt. Whether he's innocent or whether he's guilty. But remember, when people are not taken to task in this dunya, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes them to task in this dunya and even in the akhirat. And Allah will... I hope Allah forgives you. My want inside and my desire is Allah forgives you. But remember, when an individual, he does not apply the laws of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then let me tell you, when Allah's punishment comes, then Allah's punishment will grab it. Nobody can hide from Allah. You're hiding now like little wet rats in a gutter. Where's your gangsterism now? Where's your gangsterism now? You want to act like a bad boy? Act like a bad boy now. Come on. Where are you now? Then you were running in the streets. Now you're hiding like a rat. Where are you now? Let's see you walk on the road and say, I killed him. You can't do that, can you? This is the level of your gangsterness. This is the level of your gangsterness. Let me tell you what proper gangsters are. Let me tell you what proper rude boys and bad boys are. Go to those six-year-old Palestinians who are fighting tanks and machine guns with, with stones. They're gangsters who come out in the road, open chests like this, and they say, come for us. They're gangsters. You're a wussy. You're a coward. You're a weasel. You're a rat. That's what you are. 
you won't strike and you run home. Sit on the in, the, in your mom's lap. That's what you are. You're not a gangster. Dare anybody glorify these khabis. Dare anybody glorify these khabis. These people now are glorified. Their life is glorified. Oh, he's like this and he's like this and he's a bad boy and he's like this. Let me tell you, is a mudihal fasik rab arsh. When a sinner like this is praised, the Prophet sallallahu said that Allah's wrath comes into action and the arsh wahtazal arsh, the arsh of Allah shakes. Okay, what is this guy doing? He's praising a sinner. He's praising a sinner. These people are supposed to be spat on. Their fathers who are hiding them in their houses are supposed to be spat on. <coughs> they are supposed to be shunned. They are supposed to be boycotted. They are supposed to be left out of society so that another one doesn't think to himself, okay, I'm going to rise and even I'm going to gain a name. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give that father one last message, my brother. That if you have got the bottle and you are a father, and if you have drunk halal milk from your mother, then honey is on him.